Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And we are live. And for those watching on replay, we were live. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I'm tired. <laughs> so hello to everybody. Seems like everything's working. We'll just see. Welcome to the crafty chaos. You know, if 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 it's not one thing, it's another. And hello. Hello to Austria. That's fun. So, and Norway, Maine, all over the place. Michigan, Oregon, Northern Indiana. All the fun stuff. So, yes. And yes, I figured out another little setting. Those participating in the live chat. We, we now have official guidelines. I just clicked on the ones that they, they suggested because <laughs> they made sense to me. We'll see where, we'll see where things go. Cause I think some people just need reminders, you know, when it comes to it. Although the last few weeks have been pretty good. Yeah. Like everyone's been awesome. So this is the pop is more for the newbies, you know, that decide to, to creep in. But if you're new, new and just have fun, hi, welcome. We're chaotic and it's fun. Um, where did the prairie part of your name come from? I live in Saskatchewan, middle of the prairies. That's where it came from. So, yeah. Okay. Hello, hello to everyone. That's fun. Okay. I, I have a pretty decent idea of what I'm going to make within reason. As always, it's just, it's up here. We'll see how it translates. I do have links to all the things in the description box below the video. There's a link, direct link to the visual supplies. You can click on that, it'll open another window. All the things I plan on using. And then we will edit it after I'm done if I decide to grab other things, you know, as per usual. And then those watching live, you can enter the, the giveaway because I will give away the card or two. I think I can pull off two again today, we'll see. Um, but you can enter to win the cards because I'll mail them out. I haven't mailed out the last two lives, so I'm like two weeks behind. But they're actually ready to go. <laughs> so I'm hoping that'll mean that the ones I make today and give away, that I'll have them like done, mail everything tomorrow morning. Because I worked on that a few days ago. I just, there's always something. So, as always, all the things are in the description box below the video. The unpaid intern is here. He will the posts and links and helping moderate, you know, to uh, keep things going the way they need to be going. And yeah, yeah, let's, let's do the magic of the, okay, so far, so good. So far, so good. So this, some of you might recognize is an oldie but goodie favorite of mine. I thought I would use a stencil because as of today it ends today simon has a ridiculous sale on their brand stencils again is linked below and worth checking out so i pulled out the boho circle i have done i've used this in so many videos i've lost count how many times i've used it so i pulled out the the old favorite and then yeah like i said the info on the sale and the code is below and that ends tonight so it's it's definitely time time sensitive and then I've got Canson XL watercolor paper so we just I actually actually no you know I don't even need to use it on here because this one's actually just gonna this one is just for show and I'll explain that in a second I'll explain it all in a second let me move I'm running out of space again <laughs> we need a bigger boat <laughs> Literally, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just... At this point, we really need a bigger harbor. A bigger, a harbor. bigger harbor. Yeah, I just, I need more space. I just, I need more space. Anyway, okay. So I have my stencil. I have Canson XL watercolor paper. And I have one of my fave paste. This is uh, Picket Fence Paper Glaze Luxe in Arctic Fox. It's like sparkly. And I've actually gone through an entire container of this. This is like a, a new one. But when it comes to pace, especially pace like this, I was going to like zoom out, but whatever. Um, press and seal, which I did link to. 
must have must have and i have a link to it because simon says stamp carries this in their store because they ship internationally and for pretty much anyone outside of north america this is really hard to come by some places are able to find it some not it's just not easy to get so simon says simon says stamp sells it which is awesome you can use regular cling wrap as well it's not as good if i'm being honest and you can use press and seal for like a million techniques and yeah yeah i i oh i need more space i need more space so anywho press and seal you stick it on your jars of paste i've shown this and talked about this many times and then you seal it and it just helps like really seal to keep air out pastes are not uh forever products they do have a shelf life even with the press and seal some types of paste all of them are susceptible but certain types especially ones with like glitter in them it's the formula it just is even when they're sealed up even if they haven't even been opened like they're factory sealed um they can harden in the jars because they're just not meant to last forever so just because i've you know had people come away and it does suck when you go through your products and you like go to grab something that you purchased a few years ago <laughs> and the paste is hard as a rock like it happens man but anyway this is one of my favorites and i already dropped my cloth so today's starting off great let's just let's just get back into it so um i'm not sure what the comment is about that okay so press and seal remove it paper glaze lux get some of that out it's got a very the consistency of this is very it's like buttercream icing i guess so i yeah i didn't use my grip mat because it just doesn't it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter because i'm just gonna hold and the minute you put the, like some of the paste down it basically just holds the stencil in place and then we're just gonna apply some of the paste over the stencil doesn't need to be perfect i don't really care because i just want the the bit of shimmer and the texture and this is just going to give the background a little extra something something so you just kind of apply it kind of like icing a cake really and depending on the type of paste you're applying and the look you're going for you can smooth it out like so you can like go like this you know and create like intentional texture you can do whatever you want like texture paste and all of these things sky's the limit but i just apply it i'll come back to this in a second i want to quickly put this in water especially when you're working with paste that have any sort of again glitter in them you want to clean them pretty much immediately or in my case, I have a container with soap and water, sticking it in there to soak along with my palette knife. Me. Because I'll be using that again later. Got some on the edges. I don't really care. These panels right now are like four and a half by six, so they're going to get cut down. And then the other thing, which I've never stopped to really think of, but I was watching uh, Vicky Booten. I was watching her live the other night. And it's a good idea. So you got your jar, you've used your paste. Give it a few good thwacks on your counter, your desk, whatever, um, to drop all the paste back down so it's not building up all around these edges. Cause even with press and seal, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of times it'll start drying out more along the top and it's just annoying. I've done that, like my crackle paste, which I need to now clean out. But this one I, I did, like, actually I did clean this out. I forgot. But yeah, there was like crackly bits and just chunks all around the perimeter of this one. So I cleaned it out and then there. And then yes, this one needs press and seal, but I just keep this on my, I don't even put this one away because you guys know I use crackle paste all the time. Oh, give me a second. I missed the one. Let me scroll back. Give me a second. Does ink dull the shimmer and shimmer paste if you ink over it? Depends on what type of ink you use. If you're using inks with a pigment, so oxides or pigment inks, those are going to sit on top of whatever it is you apply. So they could dull it, but then just buff it with a cloth. You should be fine. All the buffing paste that's dried with the cloth, if it has glitter in it, again, it's going to catch on the cloth. I've never really had a problem, but 
depends on like really what type of ink you're applying, but it should be fine. It should be fine. I've inked over all kinds of paste. And then, yep, you can add pretty much anything that is water soluble to paste. You just, the biggest thing to remember is depending on what you're adding, you are going to alter the texture of the paste because if it's very liquidy, you're adding liquid. So you're going to thin out the paste, which again, it's going to depend on all the different types of paste. Some paste, fine. Other paste, you, you know, if they're really thin and then you're applying them over a stencil, it's going to start oozing out under the stencil because it's become such a thinner consistency. But yeah, you totally can tint these. Um, with anything, again, that's water soluble. Also though, to remember, depending on, and that's where you need to experiment a bit. I don't tint my paste very often anymore, at least not like these types. They're just the basic original like texture paste. I've tinted that in like old videos because we didn't have the options we have now. So that was the only way to get colored paste was to make it yourself. Now we can just buy whatever color we want and whatever finish we want and texture we want, all the things. But if you add too much, say you're using like a reinker or something and you add too much color that's why you gotta experiment because the the color can leach out as the paste is drying so it just depends so yeah um did i miss something else going on here i think we're good i hope so we should be good everyone here is pretty cool welcome to any newbies um yeah and then yes you can also and I don't, again, I don't do it very often. Cut your press and seal to bigger than the, the jar. And then before like really sealing it down, you can press it in, remove all the air. Cause that's what we're trying to prevent is just air. You know, remove all the air. I don't do that very often unless it's a really finicky paste or those really shimmery glitter paste. Those ones I recommend like literally removing all the air because glitter paste, it's just, it's the formula. And it will just, it dries up to cement. So with ones like this, because I use this a lot, like all the way to the end of the jar, it doesn't sit for very long. I don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. I think it'll be fine. So I did that. And then with the magic of television, YouTube, whatever you want to call it, I got dry ones right here. This actually dries pretty quickly. I did this like an hour ago. <laughs> But I didn't want to sit here on camera and wait for it. Like, this is already, like, almost dry to the touch. It's not dry dry. You can tell, one, it's a bit warped. But if it feels cold on the back, it's not dry. And this is, obviously, I just applied it. But it's, like, sort of dry to the touch, but it's still cold. So it's still wet. So I'm just going to let it dry. I'll save it for another project. We'll just stick it over there for now. So these ones are dry. Um... Versifying Clear Nocturne, do not use it with Copex. It will, um, you'll smear, it'll, the ink will smear, it'll get into your Copic nibs. It is not a good, um, black ink. I use Simon Says Stamps Intense Black Ink. Um, that's what I've used for years. It works great. Okay, so, um, I want to do some spraying. I don't even think I linked to, I think I forgot to link to the splat box because I just did because whatever. But I guess you can add the link to the splat box. Splatter box? The splat box. It's under my splatter faves because I'm pretty sure I forgot to link to it. Because uh, yeah, I want to do a bit of splatter on these backgrounds. Just, again, just because, just because we can. So we're going to... Um, yeah, I got some spray stains. I think I'm only going to stick to one for the background. I'm going to use other colors. We're going to work on paint with spray stains. Uh, yeah, we're just going to use the one. I'm going to keep it, the background somewhat simple because it's just the background. So splat box, that, let's add some water. And then spray. Add a little bit more. This will dry back a little bit. Let it do its like splattery self. Why not? 
I always love how it kind of pools up around the edges of the paste. It's fun. Alrighty. Okay. Yes, it does help to let the black ink dry completely. Honestly, just go look up videos on Copic coloring because that's not what we're focusing on today. I'm not using Copics at all. So, but yeah, there's there's a lot of options out there for black inks, but Versafine, Clara Nocturne, those inks, I don't, even when they're dry, I don't recommend it with alcohol markers because they have an oil base to them and you're just asking for trouble. So yeah, Memento is not my favorite. It used to be because that, again, used to be the only thing on the market and we just didn't have options back in the day. And then all the other brands started coming out with like way better black inks and I haven't used Memento in years. Simon's Intense Black Ink is like my favorite and I have literally used it for years. Years. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. We're good. Leave it alone. Let it dry. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. So yeah, oh, and I'm using, I did I even say that? Saltwater taffy. <laughs> spray stain. I'm, so, I'm professional. So spray with water first. That just helps. So instead of getting like the act just spray pattern, the water gets the watercolor paper wet so that the color can just move and do its thing, you know? And then, so then if I don't do anything with it, it just looks like that, which is fine. But then if we add more water, it gets all, all drippy, which is kind of what I like. And then we just kind of play with it a bit. Just let it run. And then I'm fine with that. We're good. That's enough. Kind of dab up a little bit of the excess and then we'll set that aside and let that dry too. And that concludes the, the, the mucky part of it for the most part. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. We'll see where this goes. Okay. And yeah, hello to everybody tuning in. Now we got to do the background. I pulled out, or not the background, like the focus. This came out the last year couple years ago it's not new this is the forever yours stamp set from simon's the stamp and i just i wanted to use that and i think i might tuck that in there too yeah i've done a video on this i think i used it in last year's valentine series i'm pretty sure pretty sure that's what i did um let's see i need i'll probably need to cut another piece of watercolor paper because again we're probably gonna do two so, yeah, um, let me get some more of the XL watercolor paper because we're going to do a bit of super easy watercoloring with sprays, which I've done many videos on. Pretty sure I've done it in lives as well. I can't even, I don't even remember half the things I do. It's, it's all about, oh, I remembered what I was going to share though. Happy 16th birthday to my YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> I got that notification and I, from like YouTube and it was like, it's your channel's birthday. I'm like, what? Has it been that long? Yep. I started my YouTube channel on this day 16 years ago. So by, by Saskatchewan law, my channel is now old enough to get its own driver's license. Yep. So... We're going to go get it done as soon as we're finished this live. Yeah, we're going to go get it a driver's license. Because, yeah. really, if it could start, you know, earning its keep on its own and not me doing all the work. So, anyway, that was kind of cool. But at the same time, it makes me feel really old and also just, I don't know. I'm just a glass cage of emotions right now. Anyway, I'm going to use that one and that one. And, you know, let's just use the individual leaf one, too. Why not? Why not? We can do what we want. So, yeah, yay for yay for my YouTube channel. Ah, <laughs> uh, the weird little things. But I'm glad the notification popped up because I couldn't have. If someone had asked me, you know, when I started it, I was like, I don't know, a long time ago. Don't ask me the actual specifics because I'm not gonna remember any of that. But yeah, yay what? for YouTube for reminding me. 
What's the biggest change in the industry over 16 years? Where do you want me to start? <laughs> literally like some a lot of the brands i work with didn't even exist 16 years ago yeah, I guess so, right? couldn't make money 16 years ago couldn't even make money on youtube it it came very soon after i officially started my channel when they actually started the adsense program and back then when you got accepted into it you became a youtube partner i don't think they call us that anymore we're just peons we're just cogs in the wheel yeah so yeah yeah, being able to do this as a job, that's a huge change. Because if you had told me that 16 years ago, I would have been like, ha, 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 you're funny. That's not a thing. So, yeah. Okay. Got to my images. Anti-static powder. As we must. We must do. Anti-static powder. If you don't have anti-static powder in your crafting arsenal, get some. It makes a world of a difference. Because all it does is it just keeps the actual embossing powder from clinging to anything other than the stamped image. And that includes like fingerprints and whatnot because I get fingerprints on everything. So anti-static powder. And yeah, you've been at it for at least 15 years. Yep. Yeah, my first, like, I started my channel on this day 16 years ago. I didn't, I don't think it, I think that's when I started the account is, because I haven't gone back. My first video, I think, was a year after that, but I'm not even, I honestly don't, re I don't remember. They're all still there. I haven't gotten rid of them. So the, the original, like, my very first, I remember my very first video. It is quiet. It is not even two minutes long. It was filmed on a little pink Canon point and shoot that was about this big and it was pink. And it was me using a corner rounder punch that I took the guide off of and I was using it to like showing how to make a scalloped edge with it. And I was like completely silent. I threatened my children at the time when they were little. They were like toddlers at the time, like little tiny kids. But I was like, everyone just quiet. And I was like trying not to vomit. I was terrified, like just so yeah, and I forget how long it was before I actually did a video with like my voice in it because that was awful. It was awful trauma. So yeah, but I was also the type of person who had to like re redo my, you know, answering machine message, which we haven't had to do those in how many years. <laughs> but back in the day, yeah. you had to do that. And I would redo it a million times over because I was like, oh, I sound awful. Ugh. You know, so Filming videos and like doing the voiceover, I can't even explain how long it used to take me because I would delete it, redo it, delete it, redo it. Because I was just like, this is awful. This is awful. This is awful. How? You know, but also I had issues because thanks to I got my previous life and certain people in it telling me what a grating voice I had and I talked too fast and how annoying I was. So that's why I always get a kick out of the fact when people are like, I put your videos on to fall asleep to your voice. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> I fall asleep to your voice all the time. <laughs> Me nagging you. Chris, did you do the dishes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just tune it out after a while. <laughs> just, it just becomes part of the background noise. <laughs> You're an ass. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Fun time. So that, that's the story on that. So I get, that's why I just get a kick out of when people are like, I love your voice. I'm like, Really? Do you really? Like, it's just, it's weird to me, you know? Good luck undoing. Yeah, years of, real years of abuse. That's, like, let's not, let's not pussyfoot around that. That's, it is what it is. But anywho, anywho, I very thoroughly anti-static these pieces. I try to do it separately. I get asked this, it, the, and it's linked next to the uh, Misty. While the flag grip mat in my Misty. Um, I try to keep the anti-static powder out of here because, again, like, this is supposed to grip, but it does build up, especially, like, around the the edges because this is supposed to, like, stay in place. But it gets dusty and anti-staticky, you know? So every once in a while, I peel this out and I give it a good wash. I just take it to the sink because it's the fastest and just rinse it under water. Sometimes use a bit of soap if I've really gunked it up. Let it air dry. Suck it back in. And it, it works. So... That's that's that on that. So we got got that in there. And let's let's just 
you know, let's just get her done. And then clear embossing ink, which is over here. Okay, back to you. No M&Ms for Chris today. <laughs> no snacks for you. Sneak out and grab yeah, like I can't stop him. I'm, I'm literally like chained to the desk basically during live, so he can come and he, and he does come and go as he pleases. Yeah, to grab snacks or to go deal with whatever chaos is erupting in the rest of the house. So, yeah, I can't really stop him, but it's all good. It's all good. You got me those delicious dark chocolate sea salt caramel. Yeah, I did. Those things were expensive. They're delicious. Are they? Yeah. I should have got you two little packs because I don't think there are very many in that. No, there's only like 10 of them. Because, yeah, we actually get, and that's a funny thing too. Around. It always goes back to food. Whatever, you guys started. I'll blame you guys. Um, Giardelli. Because we couldn't get those in Canada. They, they were big in, you could get them always in Target. But you couldn't get that brand in Canada. But they've spread, and now we can get it, like, at co our Superstore and stuff. So, yeah, they had packs of Giardelli, dark chocolate, sea salt, and caramel yeah. squares. So, I got Chris a pack of those. Because, you know, he may be the unpaid intern, but I basically do pay him in snacks. He does. Yep. So, it works. It works. Because, yeah, while I would love to have, like, a full-time paid assistant oh that would make my life so much better yeah i i couldn't justify paying a normal person <laughs> nothing but snacks so i could justify paying him snacks because you know that's just how it works anyway i'm inking everything up with clear embossing ink and i stamped everything a couple times so that because this watercolor paper isn't super textured it's not a reason why i like it one it's cheap and it's not super textured, but when you're stamping it with detail, like there is a bit of texture on this. And um, I run away when I hear myself. Oh, you get over it after a while. Trust me. Trust me. Like I literally, I, yeah, I used to have to sit alone in a room where no one else could hear the replay and like do my voiceovers over and over and over because I did. I hated it. But I just, I, I don't know why I forced myself through it, but I did. And same with like showing myself on camera, that that one took a while. And again, terrifying. But now I'm like, I don't care. Like I don't wear makeup. My hair is not done. I, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't faze me in the least. So yeah. Anyway, detail white embossing powder. We got her all covered. Everything's good. We'll heat emboss that in a minute. Oh, I want to move that from the other background that I'm not actually using right now. Let's add that to the pile. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing to the second piece. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to remember what my... Oi. Did you ever finish the European chocolates? There was... <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, we still going through them. We've got still some left. We got more. I did a Happy Mail haul just this past week. And there was, there was more Evelyn scent. Oh, and it was good too. Oh, oh, delicious, delicious. But yeah, we, we have, we have plenty with that stuff and yeah. And I tested the one she had sent to specifically me and Chris that had like the cinnamon and clove flavored filling. Love it. Yeah. Absolutely love it. We like that stuff. It's, it's fun. So yeah. Yep. Um. Going on here. Oh yeah, it Cheryl, you get it. You do. It just. I get it. That initial hurdle, and especially like putting your face out there for the internet, so fun. But yeah, like after you do it a couple times, or I'm not sure. I'm not sure how long it took me, but after a while, I just stopped caring. I just stopped caring, really. Like, but I can't say it. Like, even before I planned on doing live streams, so that would have been about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Yeah, more than a year ago. I my plan was to literally like full hair and makeup, you know, all the things. And then Chris can attest to the amount of meltdowns I was having, not because of my looks. I don't care, but the tech kept not working, and it's like I kept putting in all this effort to like look great. 
and then the camera wouldn't work. So I was waiting and I was, and then I was like, screw it. Don't care. So I haven't worn makeup again in like over a year. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I don't care. I might get back into it because it's fun really more than anything. I miss, I miss playing with all my makeup, but I, I really don't care. Like, yeah, people aren't coming to look at my face. They're coming to see the stuff I make. So I just, it's not like it'd be different if I was like a makeup influencer or something, but nope. Nope. So anywho. Okay. Okay. Let's coat this with, again, detail white embossing powder. So this, you know, the initial part of this is, is boring. Um, white on white. Not a whole lot to look at, but once we add the color, that's when it's going to get super fun. Okay. I have a color. Check out the color throwdown challenge. We do a different color combo every single week. And then there's also like close to 10 years of back posts as well. Um, okay, we got to melt these with the heat tool. So yeah, that's that's one of many resources. I I am part of the little color throwdown team and it's fun. It gets me thinking outside the box all the time. All right. I'm in my sweatpants. From the waist up, I'll, you know, wear normal clothing, not my pajamas, but from the waist down, sweatpants all the way, man. Agreed. Yeah, you're in sweatpants too. Yep, we're, we're not matching today, though. No. Because <laughs> Chris and I have the same sweatpants. Uh, yeah. Except for the fact, we literally, like, the brand I got them from, the men's size and the women's, the when the package showed up, they're literally the exact same thing. So then I put my initials on the tag of mine because Chris wrecks his clothing. And I don't want him wrecking my sweatpants because he's a boy and boys are gross. <laughs> uh, okay. There we go. A shiny and mounted... And we just got to do that a second time with the one I stamped first. Yeah, you can kind of see that now. I don't have pretty nails. Dude, I only started painting my nails again in the last a year again. For years, I was all my videos, couldn't even be bothered. Like, yeah, it, it's nice having my, you know, painting my nails all the time. And it's only funny to me because again, I, for those that aren't aware, I am a professionally certified nail tech. Like I had perfect gel nails from the time I was like a young teenager. Cause my mom used to do them cause she used to be a nail tech. So I had gel nail enhancements on my hands for 15 plus years, something like no breaks. Cause that's a peeve of mine. People are like, I need to, I need to let my nails breathe. I was like, I did not know nails had lungs. Don't even get me started. So anyway, 15 plus years, I had gel nail enhancements. My nails were perfect. And I did them myself. Once I became a nail tech, my nails are always perfect. Always. And then when I got, I think it was the last kid. Yeah, when I got pregnant with kid number four, <laughs> I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Took my nails off because I had a toddler, you know, got divorced. Life was crazy for those who know the story, whatever. Um, stopped everything. And only in the last year, I started consistently painting them again. And even then, like, they're chipped. I, I don't care. I don't care. Hmm. Okay, so these are embossed let's zoom in a little and then we are gonna paint these with spray stains let me so we're gonna use um 
the saltwater taffy because I was thinking because that's why I pulled that color out because I was like, ooh, peach roses. Pretty. So I thought I would do that one. Um, and then I pulled out some picked raspberry. And then for the greenery, we'll do crushed olive and salvaged patina. And then, but wait, there's more. Sugary gumdrop. Distress mica stain. I could do just this on the, the, the blooms themselves. It'll look amazing because mica stain has colorant plus shimmer. Really? So it kind of makes this redundant. This is very similar. Like the, the mica stains, if you're not aware, none of them are exact distress colors. Tim Holtz did that on purpose. You know, he, they, they did all their little black magic with Ranger and all the things and mixing, mixing colors. Um, they're, they're their own standalone thing, but they're similar. So this one is similar to saltwater taffy. So I'm being extra using, using multiples, but the big thing always to remember with this mica stains, or if you're going to use oxide sprays, you want whatever settled, whether it's pigments or shimmers, you got to shake the devil out of it, get it all dispersed because it's all, this has been sitting on its side. I don't store these on their side. They're upright behind me on the wall. Don't store them on their sides. Any sprays, I don't recommend it <laughs> because I'll, it takes one leak, one leak, and you'll never, ever, ever want to do that again. So we shake the devil out of it and then, well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. We're going to shake this up. Yeah, it's still got whatever, you know, if you still see stuff sitting and it's not, you know, moving. Uh, yeah, and you, I wasn't fishing for compliments in terms of like looks and stuff. I, I genuinely don't care. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. Uh, honestly, the only reason... I would probably start wearing makeup again is get one. It again, it's fun. I enjoy, you know, playing around and doing my eyes. I used to be really good at it. Um, and then the other reason is I have very oily skin. So, which really irritates the random trolls. Hence the new pop-ups with chat. But I've had people literally lose their minds because my glasses keep slipping on my face. Yeah, I got oily skin, man. It just, it happens. It happens. So, and yes, they've been adjusted. Like doesn't matter and I'm looking down constantly <laughs> uh anywho okay now it's all mixed up we're mixed we're mixed and good everything is good let's kind of sort of oh, I'm just gonna move that one there just so we have some some space um I gotta clean this but whatever my work surface it's gonna look different on everybody's screens to some it looks almost gray it's actually aqua I, I, again, I was being extra when I got this glass mat. Um, and it is linked below. Just, it's there. But uh, because of the awkwardness, I usually will use like a little, a little plastic palette that's white. This is more, I use this more when I'm like ink smushing to watercolor with, because then you can see your colors a little better than on here. Plus, I actually prefer using something separate because then I can pick it up and get it out of the way. Because if it's here, I'm going to go like this and then it's going to, you know. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, lo oh, I love, I know, right? I don't feel sorry for that at all. They're the best. I love the mica stains. They're so fun. I've done many, many, many videos using them. So, the same rules apply, though, even doing stuff like this. Gravity. Like, in the, you could, I don't know if anyone was really, really watching but the minute this goes on here, it starts getting darker. And that's because the mica immediately sinks down, like, towards the palette. So you, the only, you just need to remember to swirl it up when you're, like, painting with it or if you're smushing with it, whatever you're doing with it, you know? Because the shimmer is at the bottom. And I'm already making a mess, but I don't really care. So we got the, the, the shimmer, and then we'll add some of this. Sometimes it's a little bit annoying having to, you know, to continually do this, but I am not pouring this ever because you know, the second I do, it's going to end up like, so I would rather just sit here and just, and you don't need much. 
and yes, you can totally do this with just distress inks, like smush the inks, it works. But I had the sprays out and I, I enjoy watercoloring with them. That's a lot though, actually, that's more than I need. So that was saltwater taffy. We're gonna do a little bit of pink raspberry cause like pinky peach roses, beautiful, beautiful. So we'll add a little bit of this. We won't need much of that, I bet. Put the lids back on so that we don't make a huge mess. And then um, we're going to put on some crushed olive. Just add a few little drops. And then salvage patina. Because why not? It's pretty. One of my faves. Okay. And yes, you can, people, because people have like, you can use like a little pipette. I have one. I don't know where it went. It's around here somewhere. I don't like using that though, because then you have to clean it out. Like you either have to have a dedicated one for every single color, or you have to clean it out between colors. You know, like this, this makes sense to me. So where's my watercolor brush? There it is. There it is. Okay. So got my, just my little, my little watercolor brush. Got my little, little brain stopped, you know. You guys know. You guys know. Let's just let's just do this. So you just pick up some color and you paint with it. That's it. It's not rocket science. It's super duper simple. So we start with the saltwater taffy. Then I'm going to go in and again, I'm like making sure to get some of that shimmer because we need the shimmer shimmer. It's going to be amazing. So we'll add some shimmer and then I'm going to take a little bit of picked raspberry and just kind of drop it in here and there. You know, just, just let it ball, like, let the colors get to know each other a bit. Like so. And then if I want, you can go back in with a bit of the saltwater taffy. Add a bit more, the shimmer shimmer. And then you just let it dry and like, let it do its thing. So we'll come back to that one in a minute. Let's do all the blooms and get them, get them done. But this is the type of coloring when I refer to like just slap some color on it. It's literally this. You don't need to be an expert. Anybody can do this. And that because everything was heat embossed, it gives like little bumper pads to keep the color from going where I don't want it. Keep going a little bit of that. Just like so. And then I just, I have my little like cloth off to the side and I swirl the brush in that to wipe it off in between colors or if it does start getting a little too liquidy that sort of a thing yeah get a little more shimmer just yep and then swirl and then we've got this little this little bud so this part of that that I assume is part of the greenery, so I'm just, just doing that little bit. Add a bit of the shimmer. And then we'll come back to that in a second. We'll do the exact same thing with this one. So you just paint it on and it, it does not matter. For the most part, like what order you go in, do whatever works for you. I, yeah, 
Subway taffy. A little bit of pink raspberry here and there. And even though I'm doing the exact same thing with the exact same colors, both of these are going to look completely different. Because it's just wherever the color falls, or however much water, or, you know, whatever. And then we add a bit of shimmer. Add a little more shimmer. You know, because it's amazing. Can't go wrong with mica. Mica sprays. Ever. Okay, so we did that one. And then we rotate and then repeat on the bigger one. Just like so. It also helps if you go like this when you're coloring. <laughs> it's true. I'm always like, you know. It does. It helps. It makes you more professional, I think. <laughs> uh, anyway. Follow me for more, like, amazing tips and, like, life-changing advice. <laughs> and I also do not care if I go outside the lines. Or I just I don't. I don't care. These are handmade, man. Like, what else? Okay. Uh, is it relaxing? Oh yeah, I love <clears throat> I love to color. I love I love to watercolor. And it is, it's therapeutic. Like it, even for me doing this as a job, because that it, it that does that completely changes the game. Doing it as a job, it's not the same as doing it as just crafty full on like crafty therapy. I miss I miss that part of it. But even doing it as a job, doing this sort of thing like coloring and that sort of stuff, yeah, I enjoy it. I enjoy all the aspects of it, but yeah, things like this, very satisfying. Add some more shimmer just because we can. Um, oh, you guys know me, I love me some large florals, and I will never not. Like, I kind of laugh when. I see people complain about, and it doesn't happen very often, but like people complain like, I'm so tired of florals. Like, just sick of florals. And I was like, okay, like that that's fine. I'll never tire of them. They just, what absolute favorite. You can't go wrong with florals and you can't go wrong with large floral images. And for me, that's still a novelty because the large floral images have only really been a thing in the last few years. You know, when I started, those those didn't exist. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Don't need to keep overdoing it. Okay, now for the greenery, this is where we're going to use the crushed olive. Along with salvaged patina. Because that'll just give it a nice little contrast plus the two mixed together just make like the prettiest shade of blue green in my opinion and I'm not adding any like mica stain or anything to the greenery I just want the flowers to have a bit of a bit of shimmer so we go back like so, pick up some of the salvage patina, and then I just kind of wipe my brush off, and that's it. Super simple. Like, none of this is rocket science. Anybody can do this. Like, no skills necessary. Um, and then we'll go in, just like this one, and then just fill it in. And then I'll go back with the salvaged patina, scribble some of that on, 
get a bit more of the crushed olive. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Wipe the brush off. Move it around a bit. And that's it. Which medium is the for water that I prefer for watercolor? Uh, whatever my mood is. Like, I I jump around with coloring mediums all over the place because it just depends. Because like I watercolor with the spray stains. I watercolor with any form of water reactive ink, which is distress inks, distress oxide inks, Simon's positively saturated inks, Concord Ninth inks. I'll watercolor with those and enjoy it. I have, you know, I have all manner of watercolors. Like, I have liquid watercolors. I have pans of watercolors. I have beginner sets of watercolors. I have very high-end artist watercolors. You guys don't see me use the high-end stuff very often because those are... Those are in, a little more intimidating for people. Plus... Again, I do this as a job, and I like to make things attainable, and it's card making. None of this is going in the Louvre, so you don't need super high-end fancy nothing for anything, but I just like collecting stuff. Like, I have a Schmincke palette that is just absolutely divine, but do people need it for card making? No. No. So, yeah. It just depends on my mood. I, I jump around and it's very likely that I have ADHD. <laughs> Somebody commented that like some time ago and they're like, you, you, you've got the markers for it. And I'm like, yeah, I probably do. Because yeah, I fixate on things, I jump around and yeah. So there's, that's it. It's so simple. I'm like, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. Oh. You, me? Even you. Well, oh, that's... well, we'll save that for the next time you actually sit down and craft with me, because I, you can do it. It'll be a little weird with your with your left handedness. That was a problem <laughs> last time. It was more so because we were just at like our elbows. Yes. You know, because of if we could sit on opposite sides, then we were. Because yeah, your left and my right. Yeah. Dueling, was that was yes. Bows. We were dueling our elbows, but again, yeah. But yes, even you could do this, really. I'm not doing anything, like, fancy here. You know. That's pretty fancy to me. It's not fancy. It's pretty basic. So, yeah. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Because, really, you're just filling in the lines. And, you know, you can start with just, you don't have to even mix colors. You can just start with just one color like one color for the flower one color for the greenery that's fine that's totally cool you know and then once you get a little more comfortable with it start playing around have fun with it like yeah oh, 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 oh there you go thank you connie i really i really appreciate it thank you um crushed olive and salvage patina look oh yeah i know right Crushed olive is one that I overlook often, and then same thing. When I actually pull it out and use it, I, I fixate on it for a bit. I used this in last week's live. I used crushed olive. Yeah, yeah. So and then I was like, oh yeah, this is such a fun color. So yeah, it's one that I definitely overlook quite often. It's just a fun kind of yellowy green. I don't know. It's a it's a weird green. And then when you add the salvage patina to it, it just gives it a really neat um, look, in my opinion. Um, lefties use their right mind, however, still, I'm still not sure that is exactly right because I mess up a lot. I tease Chris. A lot. A lot about his left hand. It's just like a little bit of a running joke. Like, it's like you and your left handedness. But it's all in good fun. Because I am very well aware that there has been like full on stigma with people that are left handed this and like down to like back in the day, you know, teachers tying kids' hands on it. We're not gonna get into that, but like it's not. And yeah, I tease him about it. 
more so because it's those times when you run into stupid difficulties because our entire society is geared towards right-handed people like in with everything so it's weird sometimes having to watch him adapt to do just basic tasks that yeah because the product or the tool or whatever it is was meant for a right-handed person i'm like this is dumb the computer is a good one i use the most right-handed truth yeah yeah you do like it's it is what it is you know but then yeah like writing and us crafting <laughs> I would I would have tried to adapt more. We will hopefully be able to do a better setup someday. I don't know space. You know, so we can sit on proper sides to actually do stuff. It's we're we're very limited in space and technical setups and all this stuff, but someday maybe we can move things around or I don't even know. Um my mother said something about I'm smacking it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... It was literally considered a... Like, as if something was wrong with someone for being left-handed, which is... It's such a bizarre... Um, concept. So... Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I say all that because, yeah, I tease Chris about it being left-handed all the time. But it's all in good fun. There's nothing wrong with it. It's totally fine. So now we're done watercoloring. That was very simple. That's, okay. That's great. Thank you. Then got to wipe off my little palette again before I get my, my elbow in it. And like I said, you don't need much. Even what I put, I could color at least probably two more. Two more full panels with this. I know it like upsets people. It, I, sometimes I swear, you know, I get not wanting to waste things, but a couple drops of ink isn't going to hurt anyone. Same with when you ink smush. It just, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, old fashioned phones were left handed. That's right. The cord was on the left side. Rotary phones. Yeah. The cords were on the left side. I'm just, I'm literally imagining like picking up. Yeah. They were. The cords were always on the left side. Yes. Interesting. You could put the number in with your right hand. Yes. So you could pick it up with your left hand and you could dial with your right. So they were still ma they were still in that sense made for right-handed people. Cuz even the old old phones the big wooden ones, you know, you'd lift the hand piece off but you would rotate it. Crank with the right. Yeah, you'd crank it with your right hand. So random. <laughs> Uh, we used to have one of those. It wasn't hooked up, but I have used an old antique phone like that. Anyway, anyway, so that is that. I'm going to let that dry. We'll die cut it. I'm going to let that dry. We need to, and okay, my backgrounds are almost dry now, which is super fun. Not fully, because again, you can feel it from the back that it's like cool, so it's not fully dry, but those are the backgrounds. So, speaking of the backgrounds, actually, we can do, I want to do some die cutting while things are drying. Since these are going to, again, be kind of like Valentine adjacent. This is Concord and Ninth cardstock, pretty sure. I just linked to the full pack because that's all that Simon carries. But I also pulled out, and I have a video coming. It'll probably, I'll post it tonight. Yeah, or I'll post it later this afternoon like after the live i have a card that this one i made this early like recently and i haven't posted the video so that's coming this afternoon um because it's uploaded and ready to go i just didn't want to confuse the live with that yada yada so anyway i used that one on the previous cards but i thought i would use this one so this came out a couple years ago from CC Design. Kathy Zielski, totally fabulous. Love her stuff. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I will die cut. We will stack these, as again is tradition. So we're gonna have to do multiple die cuts with this little guy. Um, 
because again, as is tradition, each one needs several layers. So we'll do that, one, two, let's do three. This cardstock is probably like an 80, an 80 pound um, weight. So definitely want to have a decent weight to this. Let's set that aside, move all my sprays so that I'm not knocking them over. Uh, let's put the lids on the sprays while I'm at it. Um, my biggest challenge is fussy cutting left-handed. Oh, I hear you on that. That sort of a thing. <laughs> I actually mention in the video that's coming what that means. Sealed with a kiss. That's what it means. Um, because I, I remember when I first started seeing that on things and I was like, what? Swack. I was like, is this some newfangled slang? Is this what the little, the little, the teenagers are saying? <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. Anyway. <laughs> okay okay back back to what we're doing let's let's do some die cutting so i'm gonna do multiple passes because i only have the one little die set i was gonna die cut this ahead of time but i forgot you know i i was busy doing other things so whatever let's just let's just do this okay okay and then we can do that. It's therapeutic. I don't do the whole throwing it on my desk very often <laughs> because more often than not I'm a little too violent with it and then the die goes flinging off somewhere and I can't find it for you know six months. So yeah actually I can run this through sideways and that'll be faster. So okay. That. Get those off. Alright. That. <laughs> I don't know why that just looks like. <laughs> uh, so that's two. Only four more to go. <laughs> okay. Just, eh. yep. Oh, yep. Just gotta throw it with a little more intention. Just like so, and then we'll just keep die cutting until I get all the pieces die cut. Okay. Hello to Hawaii. Um, yes, Cutter Bee scissors are amazing. Um, I actually, Cutter Bee scissors are my go-to. They don't have a left-handed version, sadly. Um, not like Chris is going to be fussy getting. I did actually purchase the, um, you know, the Tim Holtz scissors that, that we love. Because Tim Holtz released left-handed versions of his scissors. That was years ago now it's it's been at least a couple years but when he released them I purchased the left-handed versions for Chris because say, like again just basic things you know him trying to use just you know scissors in the kitchen or like I, I use those scissors like in the garden and stuff and yeah when they when Tim released the the left-handed versions I got them all for Chris so have them in random places throughout the house for him to use because it works. It works easier for him. And they're good scissors. Ah, go. Do your thing. There we go. Okay. Isn't it cute? I, and that's how it went. I, I like this one because that's actually how I sign my cards. Those that have, you know, received my Patreon supporters and my, um, the winners of the lives, you know, that I send cards to. That's how I sign my cards is XOXO. And then sign my name. And I don't know. I've done that for years. I don't. I don't know why I started doing it. I just think it's cute. So this one is adorable, in my opinion, because again, Kathy Zilski is a genius, and I like her. Not only her font choices, but the way she arranges, you know, her her die cuts and her stamps. I'm gonna probably use one of her stamp sets as well. 
for this card because again it's a favorite like i love it it's amazing let me get that out of the way okay um yes yes tim did also did his glass mat in a left-hand version the drama that erupted when he released that i just uh people wonder why i poke the bear so much but it's considering we get it at all levels but yeah there were so many requests okay i'm just gonna stack these with craft hacky boo when he released his glass mat there were so many requests to do a left hand version even though technically you can just take his glass mat because those are familiar with it you know it's black on part and then white on a part of it for ink smushing which is great um there were so many requests for him to do a left-handed version which he complied like because people wanted it and you know it would be great because yes while you could flip it around it was upside down you know and it's nice to be able to make things specifically for left-handed people so he released it and then when he released it some of the people like flipping out and just i'm, I'm not even making this up because i remember like being a part of the live when he released it and we were you know all the different things and yeah like it's just a cash grab and <laughs> like all, like if you don't want to buy like no again nobody's forcing you this is crafting so yeah he's done many products in a left-hand version i was telling everybody how i got you the tim holt scissors for lefties oh yes yes they're, they're awesome better. so yeah it's it's just nice to see in my in my opinion so yeah there we go so we got a nice little you know it just it gives it a little bit of dimension versus just just one layer of cardstock you know like laura bassin you know says dimension is life and she nailed it on the head with that and it plays her little her little jingle that she'll sing in her videos <laughs> always plays in my head when i'm doing stuff like this like dimension is life so yeah just a little bit of a little bit of craft tacky glue um seems like a lot of trolls are really jealous of him yeah some of it's jealousy some of it is just some people are just unbelievably miserable really because d deep down deep down you have to be a really miserable person to be a troll online to go after crafters and you know complain about my glasses i get complaints now about the microphone appearing on screen <laughs> i'm like okay I'm like if that's the worst thing that happened to you today i think you're having you're living a pretty decent life you know if if something like that bothers you but yeah but yeah even tim Holtz gets it the, no the the ps the resistance and that one i just he talked about it in chat he deletes a lot of the stuff that's why you need to watch tim Holtz when he's live because he deletes a lot like edits that out in the chat but i think the best one and i say best with sarcasm was someone who told tim Hol tim holtz like they 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 sat down with intention and they on their keyboard and were like just shut up and craft already and i went lives in my head rent free i just dude <laughs> Uh, but I've, I, and I've got that too. You know, I've had people say the same thing in my lives. Like, just shut up and craft already. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to sit here now. We're just going to sit here and not craft and just talk. Because, you know, you want to be petty. You haven't met the queen of petty. Anyway. Um, Tim doesn't do anything that doesn't make sense. So, yeah. The, he is just the wealth of information and also creativity like the minute he says like but what if i'm just like oh you sit down and sit back and just let the creativity go because oh, love it love it like seriously the dude's a genius anyway got my little sentiments die cut these guys seem dry yeah yeah 
We'll let them fully, fully dry before I die cut them just, just to be safe. So, you know, I want, let's make them shimmery. Why not? I can do what I want. Okay. Um, hey, Kath. <laughs> oh, I hear you on that. Uh, some days, I, I'm not even kidding. I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning stressed out like I gave myself a stress headache because I was convinced and I don't know why I was on like scrolling on my phone and I was stressed out because I was like I have so much to do for the end of the month and I was convinced that today was the 30th and that tomorrow is the end of the month as I'm on my phone where I could have checked what the date was I was literally so stressed I was like I need to get out of bed at three in the morning to get back to work I have so many deadlines I've just spiraled for a bit and then checked my phone and I was like Oh, it's only the 28th. We're good. We're good. I have time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah. And Chris can attest that. I ask him pretty much almost every day. Like, what day is it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Mm. Truth. 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 But do you think people can get that? And for those that aren't aware, if I know not all of you are on Facebook, but if you if you are and you don't already follow my Facebook page, one, it's linked below. Do it. I shared a reel that our friend Ricky Bromero did. Was that just yesterday? That was just yesterday. Because he and I talk about this kind of stuff a lot. And he gets it too. So he did a reel. And it's hilarious. And it was literally like... All of it, in some way, shape, or form, we have received. And, yeah. Highly recommend checking it out. It just, it gave me a good laugh. And then I, I he does have it under the, bro, it's, he's on Bromero cards on, like, Instagram, also on Facebook. And he has it posted in full on his Instagram. Because for whatever reason, the version I shared actually cut off the nice encouraging part he put at the end. Yes. <laughs> so I just shared kind of the rude bit of it but I'm okay with that <laughs> but yeah like and some of the garbage I I have received some garbage as a result of it but I deleted the crap and Ricky posted screenshots of it because I sent them to him because that's what we do anyway okay shook this up again the sugary gumdrop I'm just gonna do a light on this just to give it a little extra color a little extra shimmer doesn't need much Oh, I forgot to mention, always with these, after you're, like, spraying them, um, I always wipe off the the nozzle and stuff just to help prevent getting a little, little clog. Um, yeah, Ricky's reel was hilarious. And it legit, because, like, some people come there like, I hope no one ever acts like that. It's like, dude, that's why he's doing the reel. We get this all, like, a lot. Like, and then he purposely included the splatter, 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 splatter. <laughs> And I was like, yep, because, you know, that one's for you, Linda. She's not a Karen. Her name's Linda. All the other Lindas are amazing. But the Linda who started this garbage about spatters splatter, it's splatter forever now, literally. Because when that's what we're talking about. When you go after makers and act like a complete donkey. Yeah, you act like a complete donkey about had an entire the amount of chaos she's caused and it's been over a year she's still doing it not on my channel because I think she got the hint but I welcome I welcome you Linda please come back we'll have a conversation about it because I got magnets out of it I forget which one of you guys sent me these magnets love them love them they're they're perfection like anyway that's the kind of chaos like just some of it was nasty that she started. It was ridiculous. And basically like calling people dumb. Anywho. Um, is there a good angle to spray at? How I did it in the beginning. With the spot box upright and kind of spraying forward. That. That's where you're going to get the most. But at the same time, sprays are unpredictable no matter what. Some nozzles just some of them want to do some want to do like almost like circle patterns like almost like a target some are just like woo, you know they're unpredictable they are completely unpredictable 
no, you're good. You're good. This, this Linda, you're good. We love you. <laughs> All the other. And it's the same thing with Karen. Cause that's, you know, there've been some issues with that. Karen's are great. If your name is Karen, you're great. If you're acting like a Karen, you know what I mean. There's nothing to get offended by, you know, because we love Karens. We love all the peoples. It's just don't act like a donkey. That's all that matters. Okay, what was I doing? This is what I was doing. We're going to do the insides now. We're going to set that aside because I'm just giving everything plenty of time to dry while I rant and rave and <laughs> cause trouble. <laughs> this is why I say welcome to the crafting channel. Okay. We're going to take my little stencil that has been marinating Very yeah it's been marinating in soap and water so now it's clean like I've actually made a point I just I have this little container with a lid that's about it's about this big I don't have a link for it it's just a container you know like that it has a lid and I started it because of my lives to have you know a way to clean my stencils while I'm live but I've made a habit now to can like I keep it full um, with a bit of soap and water in it while I'm crafting and oh, it's so much better So I'm not having to get up and run constantly to the sink and wash my I just throw my stencils in there and then I deal with them Later and because they sit in soap like this is clean all that paste. It, it's gone. The stencil, the stencil is good. So Yeah um, Okay how they have all this time to worry about that's part of it like in some ways it's like your your life must be pretty sad if you've literally in this the splatter woman's because i won't keep referring to her by name but the splatter woman's case it, it literally was posted on my youtube comments um her it's her mission in life to teach us crafters how to say it properly and it was it was just it she came out of the gate rude fine but she went after other small makers, made people feel very small. She made people feel stupid. Like, it was rude and nasty. So, it is now Splatter, with a capital L, from me. Forever. I will never refer to I never did refer to it. And she was wrong anyway. But it's the same freaking thing. We looked it up. There's a dictionary for a reason, people. Anyway. Anyway. It was, it was a good time. But, yeah. She's still doing it. A year later. <laughs> Cause she went after and was like leaving stupid comments on, I think it was a Kathy Zilski video and I saw them and I'm like, really dude, like knock it off. We don't need it. We don't need it. There's so much other things we can deal with. Card base, top folding, A2 um, card, been already scored. My already used well-loved post-it tape that I just, I stick all my post-it tape to the top of my die cut machines so that I just reuse it until it cannot be used anymore. Grip mat again to hold this guy in place. My clean, my clean stencil. And we're just going to put it here again, just cause. And since I'm not like centering it and I don't want to get that, I'm going to use more of my little post-it tape pieces. We'll just do a little bit of that. And then we'll do a little bit of, where's another piece? I literally have a pile of post-it tapes. <laughs> the top of my die cut machine's a mess, but I don't care. There. Okay. And then saltwater taffy, just distress ink. And actually that's true. Like language changes. And I'm all for learning proper pronunciation of things, you know? Um, I have said things wrong, like pronounced things wrong in the past, yada, yada. I still do, though. Like, I butcher, especially names. Ooh. But, yeah, you know, there's a, a huge wide chasm between giving someone some constructive feedback and being like, hey, this is how you're supposed to pronounce this random word or this is what this like you use this word but it actually means this thing you can say it nicely you don't need to be a complete and total donkey and calling names and just why you know when, when I actually say things that are that are wrong or incorrect and someone is just nice and is like hey maybe you didn't know this and this is what 
da, 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 da. you know, you say it nicely and it's like, oh, cool. Thanks. I'll try better from now. You know, I'll hopefully remember that or I won't. And you just got to remind me again, whatever. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> but yeah, when you when you initiate with petty ugliness, I will respond with ultimate pettiness forever forever so and again those that follow me on my little facebook page when i type out the word splatter you know the, the l is capitalized forever so yeah that that's how i am okay um i missed Yeah, they're, they're literally when it comes to spe specifically spatter and splatter, they are pretty much interchangeable. Like the only times you actually and not in crafting, like there, you know, is yeah, in crime scenes. Sometimes my workspace almost is a crime scene, but it still doesn't matter. You know, like I just I get that we got a lot of peoples in the true crime sphere in crafting. I'm fine with it. Like that's not my thing, but still doesn't negate what we do so yeah yeah i don't know i find it's, it's a very divisive thing not not even just a pronunciation or like which word you use but like i have people that come after me for using splatter they're like you ruined the card I'm like okay thanks <laughs> still gonna do it on the next one i like it and that's the magic of this is you you don't have to you know if, if you don't like my personality or if you don't like my style of card making or if you like what I do but you don't like my lives, you don't have to watch them. Choice. It is a wonderful and magical thing. Very wonderful, very magical. Like, you know, financially, would it be great if every single person partook in my lives and clicked on all my affiliate links? Yeah, that'd be wonderful. But thankfully, I am not the supreme leader, and I don't have to force anyone to. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people like to act like they're being forced. I'm just like, no, you're not. You know, there's, you have free will. You can click out at any time. It's all good. It's all good. This isn't an episode of Black Mirror where you are forced to watch and keep your eyes open. Scary thought. That is a scary thought. It's only a matter of time before we end up with some of that stuff. Oi. I've seen patents for similar devices. Of course you have. And of course there is. Like, it is only going to be a matter of time before we have to, like, mandatory partaking in commercials or something. Aye, aye, aye. It's going to happen. It already is in some ways, but that's a whole other... That's a whole other kettle of fish we're not getting into. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. I'm, like, losing the plot here for... For everything. Um, the size of the plates for the mini empress are roughly uh, four, rough, just shy of four and a quarter by seven and a half. They're a good size. So I do not use these for A2 size because I get asked that a lot like A2 size die cuts. Because an A2 die will go right edge to edge. And even if you line it up perfectly, that cutting edge of the die is like right on the edge of this plate. No, I don't. Don't do it. You're just asking to wreck your dies doing that. So I don't use anything like A2 sized on the mini plates. Because that's not what it's meant for. Um, I'm dyslexic and people reply back to my work emails correcting my grammar. Even though I have a note at the bottom apologizing for any errors. Yeah, like some people can't. Like I do get, I have I have a pet peeve when people use things there, there, and there. Just, oh, do I feel the need to send anyone an email over it? No. And even to correct people, I'm like, no. The only times I would consider correcting someone on their grammar is when they're like ranting and being a donkey. Then I, cause then I'm just going to be petty and like not even reply to like what their, their issue is. I'm just going to reply with the grammar corrections cause it's petty. But the rest of the time, I, 
you know? Yeah. Like, you could be dyslexic. Some people just don't know. Like, all different things. And it's just the nerve of people, honestly. Honestly. The nerve. The nerve. Like, and I'm someone, even I'll be, like, texting Chris. And I will correct my own grammar and, like, send him other texts. That, like, there. You know? Okay. Okay. Back to what I was doing. There's the insides of my cards. So I used, I, I was, I'm just been like, I'm on just a, in a mood today, whatever. Salt water taffy distressing. That's what I used as, as was shown. So just soft, pretty good. I still want to stamp a sentiment though. Yeah. So I pulled out the, and this is going to be used in the card that I'll, the video I'll post later today. I use this set because it's one of my favorites. Again, this is an oldie but goodie. This is the spring in my step stamp set again by CZ Design. And you can I get stained. I've used this one a lot. And XOXO. I think I'm gonna put hugs and kisses. Because you know, XOXO. And on the inside we'll put hugs and kisses. Grateful for you. Yeah. Because these are going to a couple of you guys. And I am. So let's use that. And that, which means I need my machine. Um, okay. And then, I know, right? Nothing, nothing triggers my pettiness more than people just being donkeys. And then it's just like, the petty train has come to the station and I am the conductor. <laughs> Uh, yep. Yep. Okay, so we got that, and then we'll line up, we'll just do both at the same time. Get, get you in your, get you in your little home. Yeah, get him lined up. And I actually don't think I've used the Hugs and Kisses stamp from this set. So when you have photopolymer, high quality photopolymer, if they haven't been used or if they are like like if they're a brand new stamp there's a coating a lot of times on these it's just like part of the washing process when they make when they're producing the photopolymer so when they're brand brand new and you'll see it they've got almost like a shine to them and you'll notice if you don't do anything to it and still got that shine the brand new stamp you stick it on there and you're like trying to ink it up and the ink keeps like pooling and bubbling it's because of that coating so just doing this is it, that's all you need to do. It works. Okay. Okay. And then dupe. This time I'm using saltwater taffy oxide ink because I want this to sit on top of the stenciled the stenciled innards <laughs> a little more. Plus I I like the oxide ink more for actual stamping because distress inks for those that aren't aware um, were not invented or formulated for stamping. Distress inks were formulated for all the techniques, blending and ink splattering and mushing and all the things. That's what they're meant for. Can you stamp with them? Totally. But it's just not what they're formulated for. That's why distress inks don't smooth out as they dry. That's not what they're meant to do. However, because oxides have pigment in them, they sit on top of the paper more and they stamp better. And... That's why I prefer one over the other. So we're still gonna ink this up a couple times to get it more because the this main sentiment is pretty solid. So we're gonna do one more. Boop. There we go. So that one's a little like softer, obviously, with like the business of the stencil, but I'm still fine with it. So it just says hugs and kisses. And now it needs to dry because it's there you go. It's it's if it's still shiny like that, it's wet ink, and which it would be because I stamped three layers of it. So I'm gonna set this somewhere. I don't know where. We'll stick it over there. That's fine. Um, there we go. And then oh, you were responding to that. I was gonna respond to it, but Chris already did it. The unpaid intern is doing his job. It's all good. 
That's not today. It can't be. That's not coming out for a bit, isn't it? Oh, it's a conference champion. Championship today. Yep. So soon. Yes. I'm I'm aware of the conflict for people. And <laughs> I get it. I'm fine with it. I don't watch sports. I'm not into it. We just that's not our thing. So, on Sundays we go live. We don't watch football. <laughs> but I get that a lot of people do, and that's fine. Whatever you enjoy. I'm all for it. It's great. It's great. Um, yeah, and you know what? I mean, we'll see. We'll see if I do any more sentiments. That's not the plan. That's not the plan. Uh, pay him with candy. Oh, yeah, he does. He gets paid in all kinds. I'm always buying him little snacks and treats and things. So yeah. Or sweaters. Or sweaters. Yep. I keep him fed and clothed. <laughs> I he's good. He's good. Uh let me do that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's move that over there. Let those dry. Now let's come back to our little our little watercolor images. I do have the coordinating die set. Um and yes, die sets for, let me put these stamps away while I've got it sitting here in front of me. Die sets for stamp sets like this are pricey because they're big. And wafer dies, high, good quality wafer dies, are priced based on the sheet of steel, the plate of steel that they are made from. And when you got big stamp sets with big wafer dies, that takes a lot of steel and yeah. Simon does do sales though, every once in a while of some of these types of sets and that's a good time to get, you know, a coordinating dust set for cheap. It happens. This one currently isn't on sale sadly, but I just wanted to mention that for those who aren't aware. Oh, and I haven't even used those two. We gotta snip those apart. I have these linked in my most used tools under, under the video. Could use a good pair of snips. And the only time I actually snip through is just to remove a wafer die. Then when it comes to the actual, t let, me, let me zoom in. I get this one because this one a lot and I've shown this in many videos, but I take like a baby wipe or a tissue. Let's remove this one as well from the center. So those are the only times I actually snip it. Now to remove all the sharp little tabs, you pinch it. You don't snip. You pinch and you twist it off. That's it. And then I let it fall into the wipes so that it's not going anywhere. And even though I'm doing it like this, because I am posting this online and people follow my recommendations, you should be wearing eyewear, like eye protection. I have big old glasses, so I consider that eye protection. But you should. Because if I was to snip this, just like with pressure, it'll go flinging off. And I have had it actually fling into like my hands, thankfully not my face. But to avoid that, you just pinch it and twist. And it's so much easier. It's easier on your hands too, so you're not doing pressure all the time. Because again, way back in the day in the olden times, when we had to do this with every single die set, my hands would ache afterwards like especially when i was doing like product videos for brands and stuff and i would have to snip apart like i'm not even joking like 30 die sets in one evening like my hand would be like the claw <laughs> anyway uh good times okay all right it's about that oh yeah the snips are just a uh, must have really they're they're wonderful so now that I got my wafer dies, I can die cut these guys, just like so. I just use a little bit of washi tape to hold the dies in place. And I always put the tape on the outside of the image. I try to avoid getting the tape 
anywhere on here because again, you're running through a die cut machine and there is massive amounts of pressure fusing everything together to do a die cut. So it will literally fuse the tape. I don't care what brand it is, even the low tack ones, it can happen, especially when there's shimmer involved. It'll press that tape into the cardstock, and while it still might not tear it, it can like pull off some of the color, etc. So I always try to tape on the outside. She likes so. Okay. Um, and then. Gonna get that last one in place, and then we can die cut this guy. There. And I just gotta get my die cut plates. There we go. And then run that through. If I can move all my post-it tape so I can actually press the buttons on my die cut machine. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. There we go. I got my little, my little roses, my little leaf, my little cluster. It's all pretty. Let's put that over there, and then we just gotta do it a second time with that one. So more often than not, I can just reuse the tape. Just rewind it up, and then we'll die cut it again. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then I don't know where we want it to be. Obstinate. Obstinate. Yeah. I know words. Okay. Get this guy in place. Yeah, oh, oh, the tape did rip, whatever. Good enough. Good enough. Alright. And last but not least is this one. And yes, images like this could totally be plasti cut. It, it wouldn't be that difficult to do. And if I didn't have the die set, I would just fussy cut it. But I have the die set, so I'm going to use it. Because it saves all of us the time and trouble. Oh, and I didn't tape that one down proper. Good job. Let's line that up again. Okay. Let's see. Do. <laughs> I'm just winning. How about we just use more of the- well, there's a washi tape. Let's use some fresh washi tape to hold it in place because obviously this isn't sticky anymore because probably because of my oily skin and the fact that I'm like sweating again. Doing lives you guys, man. Uh, so much fun. Okay. There. Well, you know, let's just be safe. Let's just- let's just- Stick that down, and that down, there, there we go. And yes, you can technically cut into the magnetic plate, I'm going to zoom out of here again, um, of the Empress. It just is what it is. I just don't like, I don't know, I just don't like cutting into it, because I do so much die cutting, like, okay, I do commercial level of die cutting, because I do this as a job, and it starts to chop up. The magnetic plate after a while and yeah so I would I just would rather not it's easier to replace for me it's easier to replace the the cutting plates than it is to replace the magnetic the magnetic mat so I'll just before I have anyone come after me on that one so anywho okay um no I didn't use the tonic tape because I showed it in a recent video I love it I love the tonic tape but it's currently sold out so I try not to really like overly promote something that is not available at the moment because again doing this as a job that's 
how we keep the lights on and all the tech running and everything is through my affiliate links. And when products are sold out, although I, I do not have control over that, obviously, but if I continue to promote things that people can't purchase and they, you know, so then it just makes it all null and void. And then I don't get sales and I don't, be, I can't pay my bills, man. Let me put that back in the package. There we go. Okay, that's done. So I've got my little, my little cluster. Where are my backgrounds? On top of the die cut machine. Okay. There we go. And then got that. We got to trim these down a bit because right now they're too big for the card bases. So I'm going to just start chopping into them. We'll just kind of eyeball it for now. Cut through the paste. Let's do five and a quarter by four, I think. Yeah. Let's do five and a quarter by four inches. There we go. And there's like glitter. Here, see? It's got glitter in it. It's pretty. Then repeat the process. That. Then we do that. Go to five. And there we go. Those are now trimmed down. Oh, oh I'm glad you got it, Betty Ann. And Yes, I will be at Create. Uh, that's in May. And yes, I am going. As soon as it was officially announced, I was like, I'm going. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. All right. And then let's... These are mostly dry. That oxide will take a little bit. But let's just fold these guys over and reinforce. Um... Reinforce the food. Yes. Uh, I love my guillotine trimmers. I they're made all of Tim Holt, I, all of Tim Holt's tools are made by Tonic, and the guillotine trimmers. I had one, like I have the big Tim Holtz one, and I had one from before, like by another brand but it was still made by tonic i have ha i had that one for over a decade and yeah the only reason i i changed it is because i don't promote that brand in any way shape or form so i got the tim holtz one which is the same thing and then i've got the, that one i was showing that one i use a ton and i've dropped it many times to the point where the handle doesn't stay on very well and i still keep using it uh chris was giving me grief about that i think just in the last live even though I have a replacement for it, it's it's sitting on the floor somewhere. But yeah, they're the best trimmers. I love them. But now we have tons of options. Let me think. Uh, we have tons of options when it comes to trimmers, specifically from Tim Holtz and Tonic, because he released like the rotary one, have it, and the, the sliding one, and yeah, do we have some twine? I have a color that will work. I might not. I don't think. That's too orange and that's too pink. So no, we cannot add twine, sadly. And the green is not the right shade of green. I'm being picky, but it actually... Ooh, I could use the white. Ooh, we'll use that. Uh, you want to look up... Actually, here. That. And add it to the links. We'll add a little bit of just white. I haven't even used this stuff. Where's the end of it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Huh, found it. Yeah. <laughs> I found it. We're good. Okay. Uh, uh, the texture paste was a picket fence. Um, it's linked in the description box below the video, but it's picket fence, Lux. Where'd I put it? Right here. 
uh, Paper Glaze Lux in Arctic Fox. And yeah, there's a link to it. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we're gonna add, just we'll just add a bit of twine just to give a little extra something, something. So let's go, no, or do I wanna go this way? I want to go this way. This is what I want to do. This is, this is what we're going to do, okay? Okay, yeah. This is how I am, like, all the time in here. When I'm not live and I'm just working, I'm sitting here talking to myself all the time. I am a stable genius. Uh, okay. Oh, also, which are under most used, mm -hmm. the reverse tweezers. Reverse tweezers? Yeah, they're under the most used category. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna put the bow closer to the edge. So yeah, you start like that, do this little, and then reverse tweezers, and you pinch it. So it's like having a little tiny pair of hands, which is just wonderful. And then I can sit here and fiddle to my heart's content to get the bow the way I want it without pulling anything tight yet. So then, once I'm happy with it, I can start pulling it tight, <clears throat> remove the tweezers. Boop. Do I make this look easy? Yes. Have I tied hundreds if not thousands of bows over the last 20 years? Yes. So practice makes perfect. And then we're just gonna do that. And it has a, a almost perfect little bow. And then we're gonna do it again. Okay. Don't forget one. Okay, wait. But man, anyway, one. Again, been doing this for twenty years. Two. I'm sweating because you know there's an audience. There's an audience. It's a live audience. It's it's just a whole different ball game, and yeah, it's it's effortless in the sense though that I put in a lot of effort ahead of time. You know, planning it out, racking my brain, all the things. You know, I'm not just like sitting down, complete. You know, clueless. There's not, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I, I try to have things as prepared ahead of time because it's my job and that's just what I do you know okay we're gonna do this again see if I can do this twice on camera <laughs> I always edit this part out of the videos because it's like boring but yeah wrapped it around you go like this here you know what Ugh, can you like do your thing there you go camera okay so we got that, you take your tweezers, you do that, you know? So then it's literally like, look ma, no hands. And then you make a bunny ear, and then I go up and around, feed it through, like that. And then this is where the fiddling, you know? And that's why you don't pull it tight though, because if it's a twine like this, so it's like many threads twisted, if you pull it tight and then you're trying to adjust it because it's twisted, it's just going to keep twisting, you know? So, okay, there we go. Um, I'll just adjust a little bit more. I do have a, that's one of my original videos as well. It's old, 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 old as the hills, but I have a how to tie bows video, like, and I used actual ribbon many, many, many years ago. Um, but yeah, it's the same, it's the exact same concept really. And there we go. I did it. 
So we got our little bows on the cards and then we got to adhere our little um our little flowers so i need to grab one do i have any words if i have these tied to there we go we're good no no i lied that's not what i wanted okay do we have any thin big comfort yes there we go there we go. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna place foam squares above and below the twine to make it a little easier to adhere this guy. into place. So we've got that and then these ones will be fine. So put some some foam squares into place because anything you're adhering over top of specific like paste and like glitter paste like this that have like glitter in them, you need strong adhesive. Either foam squares, foam tape, good strong liquid adhesive will also work as long as you let it dry long enough. Um, I, I don't use tape runners really at all anymore because I just they don't hold enough for me but I would not recommend like putting tape runner in this and then sticking it down it's gonna fall it would literally fall off after a while like if not like <laughs> as soon as you lift up the card. Okay so we're doing we're doing this. Put that one there. And then we'll take and puff that so I can kind of tuck that one in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. And then we're going to stick some on the back of this one. Yeah. So we'll go like that. And then we can push him into there just, just like so. There we go. Now we gotta repeat that process. <laughs> Because I can't help myself, even though it makes my lives way longer than they should be, all fair. It's just a habit to make, too. Although it's got to the point, the same with, you know, trolls. Like, people getting upset with me when I make videos that only make one card. It's like, dude, I can only do, like, the heads up, you know, trigger warning. The card I'm, the video I'm going to post after today's live, so a little later this afternoon, it only has one card on it. I'm, I'm sorry. It's the best I can do. <laughs> Uh, I have to laugh at it. Sometimes some of it just gets a little bit insane. But anyway. Yeah. I am I am the master of my own undoing most days. It just is what it is. So I'm I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. Uh <laughs> thank you, Erica. That's funny. <laughs> Perfection is overrated though. Uh okay. Then we can do that. Eat. And then we're gonna get you over there. Get you over there. Stick you right there. Just like that. Chop off that little bit to make it a little easier. And we're gonna tuck that into there. Thank you, Anita. <laughs> uh, you never know. Someday, 
Because now that I'm figuring out the tech thing, because the and because like Kathy Zielski mentioned that, like to do a little screen that we can click on, like to be right back, oh, yeah. like to be able to run to the bathroom, things like that. And I was like, that's right. I need to I need to do that, too, because, yeah, like my lives I'm fine with. But I was like, if I was to ever do longer ones, I, we need to be able to take a break, man. So I was like, I, I need to do a little like be right back thingy where you can press that. And run. I lost the leaf. Where did it go? Hello? Hello? I lost it. Oh, there it is. We're good. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> well, they're going to come over and help. Uh, no. I don't need no man. <laughs> no. We could have just rewound the footage and found it. <laughs> yeah, not till afterwards, though. Oh, I guess. No, you could go back. I could yeah, back. you can go back. I'm just. Yeah. Anyway, we're good. We're good. I found it. Crisis averted. If you do have one of those like intermission screens, it's got to be like you falling on the floor, like <laughs> I fall on the floor and I can't get up. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> this is like basically falling asleep kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, but the whole point of that is because if people tune in, <laughs> you know, and then it's like some bizarre image. Oh, that would actually be funny, but no, it'll just be a quick little like be right back. Anyway, okay, I did that, and then I do I even need to put these up on phone? Do I need to? Do I need to? No, no, I don't. I don't. I don't need to. So let's not. Let's just glue these on as as is. I was gonna use Big Mama foam tape, but um, because I kind of expected these backgrounds to be a lot more warped. Because, you know, I was, I was pasting them and spraying them and all the things, but they're not. So, since I popped those guys up, rather than make these cards extra thick, thick, with multiple C's, um, we're just going to glue them. We're just going to glue them. There we go. that and then put my little magnets on it to hold everything in place to let the glue dry so then I can like shift that up there and then repeat the process on this one so just craft tacky glue on our get that out of the way and then boop 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 put the lid back on the glue to help prevent it from clogging and there we go um Constantly misplace things while crafting. Yep. Literally, I spend a good chunk of time. I also, and, and then I spend the rest of my time in front of a computer all the time because editing and all that stuff. And yeah, and then I spend the rest of the time <laughs> trying to find all the things I misplaced. It's, it's ridiculous. It really, really, really is ridiculous some days. But is what it is. Okay. <laughs> you only have to glue a card front on upside down once usually and then yeah i always check to make sure it opens and that i have it you know this way and not like this way and then i glue the card yeah you only got to do it once sometimes 20 times before you learn to yeah check it before you glue it down she's got a point <laughs> she's got a point uh okay okay <laughs> i laugh because i do that all the time and then you just build up these little habits to try and prevent that because it's annoying especially for me because i put a lot of stuff usually on the insides of my cards and i don't like wasting that time okay we got 
our little sentiments. I'm I, I was gonna do a stamp sentiment from the the stamp set as well, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. I like I like this. Yeah. Yeah. And then um I'm gonna need to add just a sliver of foam. If I stick it here, just just a sliver so because i've talked about this i don't like cutting little tiny bits of foam tape i love when other makers do it because then they make their sentiments look like they're floating it looks amazing i ain't got the time for that or the like the patience for it but for something like this i can just cut like i said just just a sliver because it just needs to kind of go right behind this o so if I take that little, that little piece, and once you take the backing off, you can curve it around. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. I just need to move it to the side more. So we just, we just stick them down, just like that, and then we'll do the same thing for this one. Again, just, just a little tiny bit. Okay. And then, get the backing off. Once you're, if you have the backing off both sides of whatever brand foam tape it is, it doesn't matter. Foam dimension, foam square. Once the backing's off, they're flexible. So then you can curve it. Curve it. And stick it down, do that, do go in your home. There we go. Glue. There we go. Um, <laughs> I love it, Kath. <laughs> I call the upside downers my cards for Australia. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. Just go with it. Embrace it and send it to an Australian. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> love it. Okay. Oh, get in your spot. It'll be fine once I press it down. Okay. And you commit. And you press it. There. There we go. And then I'm just gonna stick that magnet on there to hold that glue in place. Back to what I was doing. Okay. Um, and just do glue again on this guy. Crap, did I remember to link to the bling I was planning on using? Did I do it? Um, on At the bottom, near the bottom. Oh, I did too. I did. Ha! I remembered. I'm a genius. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's do it again. Can I stick that in place? Just like so. No. Stick that there. Okay. And then my bling is very tone on tone. They call these pink, but they're 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 closer to the saltwater taffy. These are some Trinity stamps. Um there's a name for them. What's the name of them? Pink Sparkle Hearts. I have been hoarding these. They came out a few months ago, I think. But they're literal. These would, these would be nice for little shakers, too. I think there's three sizes in here. I think. It's hard to tell. Is there three sizes? Oh, yes, there is. I see little ones. Cute. Oh, maybe I was lying. Was I lying? Are they not? Use my triangle tray and then I dump them out anyway. Well, there's at least two sizes. I was hoping there were three. Maybe I'm losing my mind. They're They're just flat. They're flat and they're sparkly. And they're little hearts. They're super cute. They're different colors and stuff too. But I grabbed these because they went with saltwater taffy. And now I have to clean up the mess I just made. <laughs> Thought there was three sizes, but I guess there's only two. I'm okay with that though. Alright. So, if we stick just, just a couple of little hearts here and there. They're not going to show up like super well because they're kind of toned home, but that's the whole point. I didn't want them to be super busy, you know. 
to do that. We'll put one like right here. We'll tuck one in there. And one in there. Just because. Why not? Tuck one. Hmm. Yeah, they're interesting little things. Again, just subtle. Very, very subtle. Which I know is not my forte. <laughs> Amy's subtle? What the heck? Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Embellishment wand. It's around here somewhere. There we go. Okay. And then, um, we're going to just stick these into place with craft hacky glue. A little, a little dollop. Mm. Of course, I need my other, other one, not this one. I'm going with the sticky end. Mm. This will probably work better. No, no. There we go. A little blob of glue. Also, I'm pretty sure, was I missing it, or were, was it complaints about the ads? I didn't see any. Well, if there are, yes, I do have ads enabled on my lives. Again, I, I provide this content for free, and the ads help I pay the bills. I know they're annoying. I know a lot of you pay for, for premium, and that's great, too. I do get a, a very tiny percentage of that. I'm fine with it. <clears throat> Everyone does what works for them. Um... But yeah, ads help. Ads help. It's just all one of the many things in the basket to help pay the bills. Because if people only understood how much it costs. <laughs> how much it costs to do this as a job. Uh, so yeah, very subtle with the little hearts. Subtle. But that's that's what we're going for. Just because, you know, everything else. There's, there's shimmer and bling and all the fun things. So then we just got to do this one more time. And um, I'm going to add some to this one. Just kind of get them in there. And then we'll put one there. And um, where did I put the other one? So we'll put one there. And there. Just. Just a few. Nothing too crazy. And then while I'm doing this, Chris, if you wanna... You want me to draw? You wanna draw the winners for the cards? Sure. Cause then by the time I get these done, you can chat with the people so I get out of here. Gotta add a little bit extra glue because I'm adhering on top of, um, you know, the height of the paste. Put one there. Put one there. And then that one. Yep. Yep. Let's put these guys back in their container. Let's put the lid back on the glue so that I don't make, um, so that I don't make a big, a big mess. Because <laughs> that's usually what's going to happen. Open that up. Let's dump, let's dump out of there. There we go. Boop. Boop. Okay. And then, those are the finished cards. So let me turn my flashlight on so you guys can actually see the shimmer, shimmer, um, amazingness. Okay. I'm going to need to, let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. There we go. So the shimmer from the mica stain sprays on the, the blooms and on the die cut. And then the paste has some like sparkle. And then of course the little sparkle um, embellishments. They're blingy. 
They're so blingy. Love it. Lurbs it. Just delicious. Don't lick the artwork, but it is delicious. <laughs> and then, of course, the inside. You know? Very saltwater taffy. Yeah. Okay. So, let me switch back over. Okay. And then, let me just quickly, give me a sec. I can still do, oh, that just put it in a circle again. That's interesting. Whatever. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay. Who's our winners? So we have a Cheryl Cotty and a Rochelle Lee. Rochelle Lee and Cheryl, how do you spell her last name? C-O-C-I-O-T-T-I. Ciotti. Ciotti? I would assume. Okay. So Cheryl Ciotti. Yeah. And we'll Rochelle see if I pronounce Lee. that right. And then Rochelle Lee. Yeah. Congratulations. I will mail. Oh, yeah. There we go. You're, you, you're, I see your name right there. You're one of the winners. And then Rochelle Lee. Was that the other one? Yep. I'm not sure if she's still in the chat or not. And yeah, I will get these mailed out this week. Because like I said earlier, I'm, I'm behind. Um, but I have them. Actually, you can hand them to me. I got them all ready and postaged, postaged up for the winners. So the last two weeks of lives, like last week's live, the one two weeks ago, they're ready to go. So I will get these ones ready to go. Put that back in the pile. Yeah. Um, I'll get these sent out. I'm, I'm planning on doing that tomorrow. I'm usually, I'm just, it takes me a bit sometimes to catch up with, with life, but yeah. Thank you guys so much yeah, for. Hmm. Yeah, is it? Oh, is she? Did I miss it? No, no she just popped up. Twenty seconds ago. Oh, there we go. Yeah. No, get back here. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, we got. I got both. Yeah. So that's fun. And then yeah, again, thank you guys for tuning in. I especially appreciate. Yeah, on Sundays, I get it when there's a, when there's the glorious magic of football on. I'm just it's not my thing, so whatevs. And but for those catching up on the replay afterwards, that's that's great. I love it. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate you guys um tuning in and hanging out with me and chatting and putting up with my rants. <laughs> Cause if it's not one thing, it's another. You know. If you know, you know. And like I said, stay tuned, because I will have another video but an edited one not live um coming in just a bit because i it uses a stencil too and like i said the stencil sale is it ends tonight so i got that other video edited and ready to go and it's gonna go live in a bit pro a little later this afternoon so i'll have that content coming plus other i month end you guys like i i, I oh i stressed myself out this morning i really thought today was like the end of the month i don't know why but it's not we're close but it's not. It's been a really long month. The days just blend <laughs> together anyway. They kind of do, which is fine. It's just, I got I got commitments, man. I'm trying to get better at that. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. I These lives, we're getting, I'm getting sort of better. Personality-wise, no, that's never going to change. I'm nuts. Um, but slowly but surely figuring out the tech issues or replacing things like the microphone and you know i'm still i was there did you notice any i didn't see any, any flickering i even watched when you turned your heat tool on i i pre-plugged everything in this time oh, though that, that was it? part of it but i don't know i don't want to get my hopes up too high because it's i know this is totally random and people get annoyed with me about talking about this stuff but whatever um my next option is to hard reset the camera that's causing all the issues, but it's so dumb, but I, I don't want to because it's not easy changing all those settings back again to what they need to be. And I just don't want to do that. But now the camera's working all of a sudden. Yes. So we'll see. I didn't notice any flickering. So maybe it'll probably, um, the next time, like when I sit down later to like film another video, it's probably going to be like, ah, break. Oh, the joys. But anyway word of the day donkeys yeah don't be a donkey right. 
you know, just, just be nice. And even if you, and if you don't like something or you don't like me, like you don't, you don't need to watch, you know, that, that it's a novel concept. I get it. But yeah, if, if I annoy you or whatever, um, I thought that's fine. Like I'm not for everyone that, that it, I, it would be kind of annoying in a way if I was, I, I don't need that kind of power. I would rather not be for everyone, you know, um, it'd be wonderful again, financially, if everyone loved me and watched all my content and used all my links, but yeah, I, I don't need that kind of power. I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's weird. Like I didn't do anything. That's what drives me insane. I didn't do anything different. Like I haven't changed anything. I haven't plugged in anything new, haven't changed any settings. And now all of a sudden the camera's working. I don't know. I don't know. But like the other one froze up on the live, the happy mail haul that I did a few days ago on the live, the, the face down camera froze up. Like, I don't know. It's fun. Tech is so much fun. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, it's true. Yes. Being nice is free, you know? And if you, and if someone is, is, I don't know if you feel the need to offer criticism, if it's constructive and presented nicely, you know, it, it, the, uh, it's not that difficult to, to just be nice about it. And if you absolutely hate the cards I make or my voice or my looks or whatever it is, just don't watch. Unsubscribe, unfollow. It's, it's good. You don't need to announce it. I'm not in an airport. You don't need to announce your departure. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, just, it is. It's a novel concept for many, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, yes, the mic is showing. I know the horror of it all. Uh, the, oh, this dude. He not this one. This one's great. It should be the previous one. We had all kinds of issues. So many issues, but I got a whole new microphone set up. And then I brought it on screen because the closer it is to me, the better you can hear me, you know? So it's hard for me. I, I could probably, cause again, and I'll just, it's some, and some people want to do videos, so you might learn something. Other makers are able to keep their, their, their microphones off camera more, but they're usually in a more enclosed space. Like, you know, Kathy Zielski has a wall, like practically right in front of her. Like she crafts and then she has her camera but she has a wall and she's got like soundproof panels like she's got an awesome little setup but and she's in a smaller room I'm in a garage so it is like 12 feet up to the ceiling you guys can probably hear the garage heater right now which I cannot turn off I will not turn off hello it's winter um big big space open very open very echoey very annoying and there are no options to enclose without like literally doing renos and I'm not going to renovate my garage because this isn't our forever home. You know, um, I even thought about like draping fabric. <laughs> However, I will never do that in here because dust, like I, it dust and spiders. Like if I was to drape fabric to like help, with sound and everything, I would be just creating spider. -Man. I can't, the thought I've had issues with that working out here, like them dropping from the ceiling onto me. For those that aren't aware, I have severe arachnophobia. Like just talking about it, I'm starting to sweat again. Like I want to cry and run. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm making it work, but the new microphone much better. I went, I went with top quality with my microphone. So, and it's just closer and we're just going to work with it and whatever. Um, I should, I kind of should like, you know, <laughs> however, it's causing issues. Even having it in screen, it causes issues sometimes with the focusing because the camera now tries to focus on the microphone and not me. It's, it's fun. Doing this as a job is really fun. So anyway, those are, those are all my random thoughts, you guys. Um, yeah, I know. I'm mean. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm cruel. I, sh I should become an icicle. <laughs> it's actually not as cold as here as it was a couple weeks ago. I think that was just, was that just a couple weeks ago? This has been a long month. You know, we were negative 55 two weeks ago and now it's like negative one. It's yeah. 50 degrees swing. Anyway, 
Um, I've seen people use lapel mics. Oh yeah, like there, and I have one, and I, it was a disaster. Those some of you might remember that I got again a very good quality lapel microphone setup. Everything I used it for multiple multiple videos, tested out, and it never worked for me. We I adjusted the settings, everything. It 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 was very blown out and just. Oh. It didn't work for me, which is so frustrating because it's it's professional. Like it works for everyone, but it didn't work for me. The sound was absolutely garbage, which is just frustrating. Frustrating. Anyway, um, but yeah, I have the amount of like micro, the amount of equipment I have to do videos is is insane. It's I could literally set up like a whole second setup. Like if I want to start like a podcast, I have enough equipment I could set up a podcast not doing it um there's that that's it's so oversaturated besides the fact nobody needs to listen to me yap i talk enough <laughs> uh you should just oh we should this is you know it's amy r welcome to my face and my card making space and this is mike say hi <laughs> uh what was the person that will have to move all your crafts to you me yeah, that's me. And well, Chris will help when the time comes. It's many years away, but I and I was the one who moved it. We actually this is and I've talked about the story before. when my guy used to I was renting when I was when it was just me single mom before um, just a few blocks from where we live now. And when we got this house, <laughs> we got possession of this house uh, the beginning of September. And for those that are aware, that is stamp timber. That is my busiest month of the year. And this was five years or six years ago now. Um, so I leading up because we knew a year in advance, you know, what everything was going to happen, et cetera. And I didn't terminate my lease. Well, and I had to anyway, I had to keep it till the end of September, my, my rental agreement, because we didn't get this house till after the first. So I still had the rental. We moved everything but my office that first month. And I worked over at the rental the first month before moving all my stuff here because it was stamped timber insanity. Oh, was it nuts? Like my, my internet provider shut off the internet at the rental because they confused what I had, you know, requested that it was supposed to be the end of the month. They shut off my internet, like in the middle of stamped timber. All like... <sighs> There was so much insanity. I just, I look back now and I can laugh. Anyway, so then when the time came, you know, my time was up. It was time to like actually move my office. I did it all myself with Chris's help. Just boxes and boxes and boxes. We moved everything. And then at the time I had these, bi those big metal wire metal shelves, like from Costco, which are now on the other side of the garage. We use them for storage, but that's how I stored all my stuff as I had a couple of those. And <laughs> it was the middle of the night. Because we had to wait till like the kids were, we had the kids in bed, the older ones were able to, you know, keep an eye on them. We went to the rental, we took, and we had no, we didn't have a vehicle big enough for any of that stuff. So we took those, because they have big wheels on them, and we wheeled them, all those blocks to our house, like in the middle of the night. Chris was just, I don't know why, he found it just the funniest thing ever. And I'm just like, people are going to think we're completely, you know, like, we're just down the middle of the street. Thankfully, like back then too, like our suburbia area was not as developed as it is now. So there weren't as many people around. There wasn't really traffic. And we're just like traipsing down the street with my big old um, metal shelving unit. Um, yeah. I, I, hey, Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Everyone, check out Dawn's videos, you guys. She's amazing maker. Uh, the lapel mix don't work for me. I don't know. I don't know why. And trust me, I've like, I've tried everything, all the settings, all the things it, it, it just, the sound is, is weird. I had so many complaints the first time I ever used it. I didn't understand the settings. And so the sound was really blown out, but I like, I, I did everything. And like, they were, they were the road ones too, like the good ones. And they don't, they don't work. They don't work for me. They, they, and say actually no road mics. I had, I have other, I have another road microphone setup that can actually hook up to my camera. Um, I can't get that one close enough 
for it to really register for me. Like they don't, they don't work for me. They don't work for me. It's annoying. I wish I could. And also I'm clumsy. Like when I was using it, cause you know, a lapel mic, you have to have it like connected to you. And I am clumsy. So I'm like f getting myself caught. I, I practically strangle myself with those damn things because of the white. You can get ones now though, that are like magnetic. I was looking at them and I was really tempted. They're a different brand and they're very, they're much cheaper, but they're like, they almost, they're like, it's like a big round button and you can like magnetic it to yourself. But same thing, it, it would fall into my bra. I'm sure like, no, no, even this one, I hit my head on. <laughs> I'm clumsy, man. <laughs> Uh, you probably don't, you'd probably be fine with a lapel mic. They, they work. I know Christina Werner uses a lapel mic and I think it's the road one that she uses. That's pretty, I, I, I'm like a Christina Werner stalker. Um, I message her every once in a while. I'm like, exactly which of this thing did you get? Like, I have so many things that are like, if she recommends it, I buy it. Anyway, I think she uses the road lapel mic and it, she sounds perfect in all her videos like it it doesn't work i don't sound good at all with that thing it doesn't work for me um okay we're just we're just chatting we're just having a fun time i don't mind being on here with you guys um oh no no <laughs> uh yeah i like yeah lives are more than enough and but yeah podcast it's so oversaturated with podcasting um i'm going to need to update my setup to complete two cameras trying to figure out the, yeah 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 the sound is sound and lighting all of it every aspect of it it's it's exhausting and someone actually made that um comment on last week's um on last week's live because you, you know I, I talk about the tech stuff all the time but about yeah because people complain you know people complain that the microphone's on the screen or people do they complain about the sound or whatever when it's actually constructive feedback and it's like oh we can't hear you or oh we can't see you you know whatever it is um that like i will take that feedback and i will try to fix the things but some of it it's just like unless you um, don't give feedback unless you know what you're talking about you know if you also do videos 100%. If you figured it out, if you figured out the sound issue or our cameras, lighting, whatever, give your feedback 100%. If you don't have any clue and you just want to complain, you're not being helpful, you know. But yeah, the tech and and the cords and the lights and all the things are it's a lot. Anyway, I was what I was saying is someone made a comment about that and they're like, you know, give give the makers um some slack because we're all like we're not trained you know I, yeah I didn't go to college to learn like set design tech lighting cameras you know all those things like I I'm not I I am just figuring it out as I go and then I message Kathy Zielski and I'm like what's wrong with this why why is it working for you and it's not working for me <laughs> that's literally what I do <laughs> And every time Kathy's just like, that's never happened before. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, why is this happening to me? Where? Yeah. Yeah. That's how we figure it out. So yeah. Um, I just updated the flat LED panel lights. Yes. Yes. I have Elgato key lights. They are, I, it took me many years, many years to build up. Cause, and same thing, I, but I'm in a garage. Um, so that's my only source of light is my key lights. I can't, the overhead light, it just is, it would blind everyone. Um, so yeah, but there, there's more options now than just the Elgato ones are again, kind of top of the line, but there's more options now, you know, and they're, they're great and they're LEDs. So they're very low power. I, my old lighting setup from way, way back in the day. And I'm not even kidding. I think I showed that I took pictures I had like, and I still have them because you keep all the backups. I have so much stuff on the top shelf of our closet. It's insane, like lighting equipment and everything. But it used to be just Ikea desk lamps, the kind that clamp, the silver ones. I don't think they sell them anymore. And then I had Ott light bulbs in them. And then I had paper towel taped over them with painter's tape as a diffuser to like soften the glare. <laughs> That's what I used. 
And I had to always monitor them because those alt lights used to get really hot. So I always had to monitor the lights to make sure that I wasn't going to set fire to my house. You know, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. I'm trying to figure out how to photograph my cards. Good luck with that. I'm the last person to ask. I'm, I still struggle. I, and I need to redo my setup for taking photos of my cards because I suck at that too. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah. It's, it's just, it's a joy doing this, um, doing this as a job is just, it's interesting. Some days it's awful, but most of the time it's, it's great. It's just, yeah, trial and error. And I have invested a small fortune in, in tech and software and lights. I just, all of it. It's nuts. Cause what works for everyone else, like never works for me. It's frustrating. So yeah and every time we change something um ikea sells ring lights now with a phone horn. i know there's so many more options now like i was actually i was legit this is where i'll kind of end i was telling chris this just the other night um i was like people have no idea now like when i started doing videos nothing there was nothing available like you could only get top like professional equipment i didn't even have like you know we want we didn't have a smartphone smartphones weren't a thing when i started doing videos that wasn't a thing i had my little i talked about that earlier my little pink canon point and shoot i wish i'd kept it just for nostalgia's sake i'd put it on display anyway um i had it i had a professional i happened to have a professional tripod for other reasons um because my ex was like trying to be a photographer anyway i used to have it in this bizarre angle this big tripod and I would angle it beside my desk and the, like the legs for it would go out like six feet because to get it on an angle so that I could kind of get the camera as like angled as possible so it kind of made it look like my old videos it looks like you're kind of looking over my shoulder and you couldn't access like anything it was nuts but I did what I had to do and then my first lighting setup was this enormous softbox that I had to connect with, like, I had bags of rocks as ballast to, <laughs> it's nuts. Oh, the things that are available now, like, you can get stuff at Walmart, because, like, every, you know, kids now, everyone wants to be YouTubers, all the things. It's like, you can get, like, light-up kits and phone holders and, and equipment at Walmart. Like, you can get it anywhere now, and I'm just like, dude... You know how difficult it was for me back in the day, like researching, like, and paying all the amount of money for professional stuff. Like the stuff I have is professional now, but you know, there's just more of it. So anyway, it's crazy. It's crazy. There's so many things like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. My original setup back in the old homes, back in my previous life. So this is great and I'm not even kidding it was massive it was probably like three or four feet this great big huge soft box that had multiple ot lights and it was like suspended on this huge tripod and then I had to attach it to the wall because of again the weight and to keep my kids from knocking something over so like I had it screwed into the it was in, it was insane it was insane I sold it when I got to and then yeah I had my little Ikea set up with the paper towel <laughs> literal paper towel and painter's tape and then I got my first key light years ago yeah it was like six it was at the rental so it was before I moved in this house so it was like seven ish years ago because those are starting to come on the scene because of the gamers gotta I gotta give the gamers credit the the streamers that like game for a living that's where things really started to change because they needed lighting for their for their gaming setup and that's what these were meant for so anyhow, it is, it is what it is, but thank you guys for, for tuning in. I enjoy chatting. It's fun. It's nice having somebody to talk to. Um, oh, and I'm glad like it is, it's, it's a lot of work behind the scenes, a huge investment did. And I'll, for those wanting to, to make videos, whether it be like reels or YouTube videos or any of that sort of thing, you do not need any of this at all like use your phone which speaking of stuff shoved in my bra use your phone you're great if you've got a smartphone the video quality on those things nowadays is insane compared to what they used to be you do not need professional lighting microphone nothing 
like start with just your phone because you can get a little, um, you know, a little setup. You don't even need a, 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 um, a camera mount. You know, you can get them for cheap. But I remember like we would used to like like stacks of books and you'd like stick your phone in it and like stack things. Works. You know, start with the basics. Do not invest a penny into any of it. All of this is free. You know, starting a YouTube account, it's free. Social media accounts are free. So then making a video is free, you know, because if you've already got it. And then down the road, you know, if you, if you decide it's like, oh, I don't like, um, I don't like how the, the light is, or I don't like this, or I want, you know, so, then you can start considering getting, you know, a camera mount or this or that. But you don't need a full professional setup to start. Don't do it. Like, just, just don't. Don't do it. Because you might hate it as well. Like, don't invest the money. You know? So start for free and then build. Because that's where all of us started. You know, I started with my tiny little pink point and shoot. That's it. That's what I started with. And then just over time, you know, we get this light and that thing and that. And yeah, like Dawn said, it's so much easier and less expensive to start now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the phone does. The Like, the lighting, like... I have a newer, not the newest version, but my, my iPhone, the, the video quality on these things are, and like, it'll even adjust sound on this. I've noticed that. Cause I, what was I filming? I was filming something. And I also noticed when I was like FaceTiming someone, things like using your heat tool. Cause you know, it creates a loud noise. The, the, my, at least with my phone, it will automatically adjust. Like after a couple seconds of that noise, it will automatically like, um, kind of filter out that noise. So you can hear my voice better. And it's like the phone does everything. Like that's all you need. If you've got a smartphone, you're good. You know, everything else after that is just, just extras. So yeah. Yeah. It, I hope, I hope that helps, you know, for anyone that's, um, curious about like getting into this sort of a thing because yeah you just you don't you don't need the fancy schmancy nothing i have been doing this for 20 years like we said earlier my, my youtube channel is now 16 years old as of today so happy birthday to my youtube channel and i've posted well over 2,000 videos you know like and i do this now as a full-time job like this is my only job and it has just built over time. So like I, and all of this equipment, I did not purchase all at once. I couldn't, I couldn't purchase all at once, you know? So you start with whatever you got and then you go from there and anyone can do it. Um, yeah, the ambient that's, thank you, Dawn. You're, you're better with words. <laughs> it lowers the ambient sound and it amplifies your voice automatically. So the, the, she's a genius. You should watch her videos, you guys, if you don't. Subscribe to her. Her cards are amazing. Seriously. I have many of Dawn's to catch up on. It's the amount of money I've spent watching her videos. I have so many products sitting here that I was like, I need that much. I ordered Dawn, I ordered a paper crimper. Thanks. I blame you. It literally is your fault. I ordered it. It's here. I forget where I put it. I used to have one, you know, the Fiskars paper crimper from like a million years ago that I got rid of because I was like, I'll never need this again. This is so old fashioned. And then you did those Christmas videos using a paper crimper. So I was like, dude, I ordered it. It's bigger than the Fiskars one, but yeah, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. Like, I, you know, so that that's my random thoughts on doing this. Uh, the tech aspect of it anyway and yeah that's <laughs> because you needed it I know uh, yeah I'll use it one of these days or it'll sit and gather dust I just yeah I I the funny thing is is I'll probably find because I yeah the Fiskars one it's, it was blue blue and orange wasn't it um I had it from the 20 years ago, the, like the before times. And then I stopped, you know, cause we just stopped using that kind of a thing. And I know I probably still have it. It's probably in a bin underneath five other bins in a corner, you know, somewhere. Couldn't find it. So I ordered after seeing Dawn's video and I was like, Oh, I really like that. 
So I ordered it along with like ridiculously overpriced texture paste that I still haven't had time to experiment with and sea sponges, which are actually sitting behind me. I got these too. I got sea sponges to create. I, I did use these ones. I used them in a video a while ago. I think it was during my Christmas series because I was saying it was all Dawn's fault. Because I was like, oh, you, you need sponges in your life to create that texture because she showed it. And if she did it, I got to do it. So yeah, I got my little sea sponges. What did I make? Or was it during the Halloween series? I forget. I used them anyway. So there's, there's that. I didn't use the paper creamer, but I did use the sponges. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still got to use them more they, they they create fun texture so yeah and for those water you just you kind of like swirl them especially oxide inks especially swirl them in your oxide inks and you tap it and it just it creates really cool textures so they're sitting there because i came across them the other day because they were again in a corner where i couldn't find them or see them so i pulled them out and i put them a hole behind me and i plan on using it so anyway um i think Oh yeah, the shape scissors. Remember Costco used to sell because those were like all the rage and Costco sold it as a set on a carousel. And it was, I think it was two tiers, wasn't it? With all the different shapes, which was just like, it was, and it was cheap. It was like 30 bucks or something like that. And you got like 30 pairs of shape scissors. I got rid of those many years ago. <laughs> I donated them, I think, or sold them. I forget. But yeah, I, they were they were the thing because we, we didn't have wafer dies you know and punches shape punches all like our border punches yeah anyway um okay yeah all the things we used to do there's so many things anyway i i would like to keep chatting with you guys but i i it's this has been a long video and i i have other work i still gotta do i got the other video coming the one for this guy uh the video for this card Ooh, yeah. It's not in focus. I don't care. It, the video and the photos, that's coming a little later today. So I'll post that one. And then, yeah, I'm one of these days we should just do a, a, a live where, um, I don't, yes, same. They're in a drawer because I don't hardly ever reach for them. But the, yeah, the pink, I have a good pair of pinking scissors. Like the, the, the ones actually meant for, for fabric, like the, the good, like they're antiques, basically. Kept those. They're awesome. Um, haven't used them in years, but I'll never get rid of them. <laughs> anyway, one of these days we should just do a live where we can just sit and chat, you know, Q and A and and chat and and talk about whatever, you know. Um, I do plan on doing a Q and A on my Facebook page because that was requested forever ago. Have I got to it? No. It never ends. One of the things. So, anyway. Thank you guys for, for hanging out. I'll do the, the, the photo, my, my version of photos, the photos for these guys. I keep forgetting they're actually on screen. Um, I'll do the, the photos, social media, yada, yada, like always. And then the replay, of course, will stay up for all my peeps. And yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys that hung out with me and chatted for, for funsies. I love it. And I will, I will see you guys in the next video and I'll chat with you all later.